You look be. good. I, I look, eh. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of Two Guys, One Move. This is episode 33. 33. I am one of your hosts, Brando Comics, and with me today is the man who I would gladly eat a cream pie out of his asshole, Mr. El Fuzzo. Nice. I told you it was going to be normal. That was normal. That was a very normal. <laughs> so if you, cream, if you cream pie a butthole, is it a chocolate cream pie? I would think so. Mm. Because it's a butthole. And I mean, right. unanimously, the name for a butthole is either balloon knot, chocolate starfish. So I would assume so. I, I'm going to draw some attention to my sweet Frog Brothers headwear today. Because I figured last week I left my fucking mask on the entire episode and didn't even notice it. I figured I'd put it somewhere where I would notice it today just to be a dick. All right. I like it. <laughs> um, real quick, but, we actually just... Because you're going to probably see me wearing... and I don't know. Yeah, you're definitely going to be seeing me wearing the same clothes. I swear I do change my clothes at least oh, um, yeah. bi-weekly. But um, we just finished filming a hot sauce review. And that hot sauce was so good, I need to fucking say again. Yes. That was that good. Dude, it was so fucking good. I can't get over that. So, um, and since we're, you know, since we did just do it, uh, another big shout out to Master Lou, dude. Like, thank you for bringing that to our attention and <clears throat> letting us, you know, drive us to that path, man. Because that yeah, shit was fantastic. Stoked. It was so good. Like, I absolutely, I like I said, man. Like I said on on the the review, dude. Top five for sure. And my number one ever. Yeah. Fantastic. But we are on to GOM now. So we are going to talk some fuckery. And uh, popped into my head the other night. I figured I'd ask you <clears throat> if there's ever been a character in a movie, a video game, a book, um, anything that you felt was like a very pivotal character but never got or – got the love or got the respect that that character probably should have first one that comes to mind because okay, i yeah. just and and it's great because your <clears throat> your headwear reminded me of it actually oh is i don't know if anybody here i i guess i was on the 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 train late but i binged in two days time with my wife cobra kai right and that hit me right in the nostalgia fields and oh, brought yeah. me right back to my childhood. But yes, um, Ralph Macchio, mm -hmm. his wife on the show is one of the best characters ever. Okay. She is so fucking hilarious and so grounding that I don't know if people really, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't like Google this shit, but dude. Right. If she wasn't on the show, I don't think I would love it as much. And she's not in it a whole lot. Right. Like, let's let's take away the fact that she's a really, really attractive MILF that's brunette. <laughs> take that out. That could, she could be, I'm not going to say Roseanne Barr because everybody hates her. She could be oh. anybody else. And I'd still say that that character is written so hilariously. And, and that woman, just she just executes it. So, yes, I don't think she gets enough credit, at least from um, the little bit that I've seen online and from uh, me talking to some of the people that have watched that show right um she definitely <clears throat> rings that bell for me for this Hell current yeah. show i don't know i i am going to interject because this character that i'm about to name has the following like they have a following from said show but I don't feel that, like, it ever, like, the character himself ever got expanded on more so. And that is actually Bobby from Supernatural. Okay, yeah. I have always been a huge Bobby fan. Like, the that idiot. dude, yeah, the idiot balls. That's why I say balls all the time now, because of fucking Bobby from Supernatural. But I always felt like he was such a pivotal part to that show. But instead of, like, going on real heavy about kind of how he became their father figure in later seasons, I'm not going to spoil shit, you know, because if you watched it, you watched it. If you didn't, you didn't. But, like, instead of 
expanding him and making him such a bigger part of the show, they just kind of did something shitty. And I was just like, was that the actor's choice or was that the studio's yeah. choice? Because like, because then they do some other weird bullshit that like it didn't pan out for me. Like my wife kind of dug it, but I was kind of like, mm, that's just stupid. But yeah, he was always one. He was always big for me, like as for TV wise. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel like that's something that's missing. And like this brings us back to last week's episode. I really feel that that's something that's missing in today's comedy. Is the low man in the comedy movie. Kind of like um, DJ Qualls in Road Trip. Yes. Like he was that underlined character. He wasn't quite the main. He wasn't quite part of the main. But, dude, he was the funniest part of the fucking movie to me. Because, one, he had the funniest shit. And, two, like, just his delivery was always, like, perfect. And I feel that a lot of times in a lot of, like, newer comedies, like, instead of having that subtle background character that just kind of runs through and says goofy shit, like, that everybody has to be so front-faced and so, like... You know, like, we have two main characters in this movie instead of, like say the rob schneider character in all the adam sandler movies oh, where God. he just he just kind of randomly popped up and said funny shit though <laughs> like, you can do it right he was the you can do it guy he was uh he he was the the delivery guy and big daddy that just kind of randomly was there and said dumb shit for a couple of scenes i don't know man like i just i got to thinking about it the other day i was like you know what and there's so many like unsung heroes of movies and shit like that that i don't feel that we focus enough on and i think like it's it's like a dying art it's kind of like the straight man in a comedy like there's not enough straight men anymore to where the the funny guy is extra funny because of the straight man because instead of doing the funny guy straight man now it's just two funny guys trying to out funny each other I'm, i'm sure you're not talking about sexual orientation (laughs) <laughs> I mean I guess technically with the terminology it could go both ways. Just like me. Don't get don't get offended, you bunch of puss holes. <laughs> no. You, no I'm just now kidding. that we have the context of it. Actually, uh, one just popped huh? in my head that I feel <clears throat> they could have done more with in the movies. Right. Because he has actually a really integral role and the relationship is great in the books. Okay. He's uh, Heimdall with Thor. Absolutely, dude. I don't like, think they tap into that enough. I don't think so either. I uh, I don't think they tapped into it enough in the movies. And I think by the time that they did kind of like flesh him out, they were killing him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I like at, at that moment in. Was it Infinity War? Well, when Thanos. Yeah. It wasn't Endgame. It was Infinity War, right? That he pe- perishes? That he perishes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> it's been... We always fucking... gotta say, because there's always gonna be that person. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm just gonna be like, okay, move the fuck on with it. But, uh, yeah, no, like, I feel like he didn't really get enough of that, like, well-roundedness, because, like, he he was always there in the Thor movies, but he was always kind of the guy that he was just the Rainbow Bridge guy. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, get here, go. <laughs> it's like there's so much more to you, I feel, that we don't we don't ever well, get hopefully, to hopefully maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe like is he expanded upon more in the books? Yes. He is? Okay, so he he's definitely a bigger a bigger piece to the He's puzzle. actually writing. Considered one of the most important characters of that whole like of the the whole ethos. Thor realm. Yeah. Yeah, the whole ethos of Thor. That's cool though, man, because like he is a fucking badass character. And that brings me to another person that actually got hated on. And oh. I never understood why he was hated on. So I guess because people don't want to get into it, the, the complexities that sometimes because sometimes, you know, movies or stories aren't just right. point A to point B and, and, and that's it. It's 
point A to point Z, and there's a bunch of fucking letters in between. <clears throat> and uh, one of them that got hated on a lot. Oh, his character is so fucking annoying. What a giant pussy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's annoying. It was Samwise Gamgee in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I always appreciated his character because people don't right. get the, the premise of Lord of the Rings that Frodo, right. this innocent, very good person, mm -hmm. is going through a transition where he has to fight yeah. the, the urge to be turned and to be corrupted. Right. And that is like imagery and a mm -hmm. nod to a person that was fine in war. Okay. And then how they are throughout the war and how they become at the end of the war. And the people sometimes don't look into it and realize that Tolkien a lot of his shit was was World War World War 1 based. World War 1 based. Yeah. And so there the the Samwise Gamgee's character was the embodiment of the voice that's supposed to ground you. So he's like the embodiment of conscious. Yes. Like you're you're conscious, like yes. physically like, yes. in front of your face, right? Saying, "Oh no, Mister Frodo! Oh no!" and and yeah. willing to die for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Of course. Because it's like on a battlefield. Sometimes people get that shell shock, right? And they need that buddy to be like, "Hey, come back, come on, motherfucker!" Yeah, so absolutely. that's that's what that was. But everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people were just like. Oh my god, his character is so fucking annoying. Now, do you feel that like <clears throat> cuz this is this is another thing that I figured that we'll we'll fucking touch on a little bit. Uh, do you feel that it's possible for another form of like whether it's a movie or a TV show or something hating on another movie or TV show or something like that can influence people that have not really made up their mind about shit to automatically hate something like for example i saw the first lord of the rings and i was like kind of in between on it like uh, i was like you know it wasn't a bad movie but like i'm not super hardcore fantasy guy so i was like you know it wasn't bad but like there were things about it that made me laugh and you know i made my own personal jokes about it and shit but then i went and saw clerks <coughs> And there's the whole scene in Clerks 2 where Randall is making fun of the Lord of the Rings kid while the Lord of the Rings kid is making fun of the Star Wars guys. And there is a, a line in there about fucking Samwise blowing fucking uh, Frodo. Frodo. And I really wonder if, like, there were people in the world that, like, maybe were in my situation where, like, they watched the first Lord of the Rings, didn't hate it, didn't love it. But then saw that and were like, yep, that totally makes sense to me. And now I hate this shit. Because it seems oh, like sometimes course. people can be so easily led by, you know, an opinion this way or Abs this way Dude, or that. Come on. People's opinions get swayed based upon only reading the headline and on social fucking media. Very so, true. yes. But that's, I mean, Definitely. that's the. Because it also becomes, like I said, it, it's the, the it becomes a joke. Like I mm -hmm. always appreciated Lord of the Rings right. from the books. I appreciated the movies. I appreciated the importance of Sam's character in it. Right. And casuals maybe that didn't read the book or whatever, and they just saw it like, right. That's oh god, this guy's so like. So then they go now, and then they make a bunch of fucking jokes about it. Now, as you, someone that is very very into it. And me, as someone who has seen the first movie and the third movie, because there is a curse on the second movie that I can... It, it's the it's the Doctor Strange curse. Oh, the Doctor Strange curse. Uh, I cannot I finish the film. I just fall asleep. Every time they get to the, like, the elf castle with all... They're elves, right? Not yeah. fairies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, they get to the elf castle and Liv Tyler's giving her big speech, man. It's just like <laughs> every fucking time. I understand. But like, should I? Because like, dude, I work 12 hour nights at my job. So I listen to a lot of audiobooks and stuff. Should I seek out those on audiobook? Oh, God. I'm always going to re recommend those, man. I'm always going to recommend okay. those because 
there's so much content and so right. much lore that surrounds the whole Middle Earth realm. Right. That it's like, dude, they, they made languages based on on these books. Right. Like multiple, not just okay. Elvish, but Orcish, a bunch of different like people fucking right. made different languages. So, yes, the thing is that I, I don't like with audiobooks is I always would like to sample them first to see if that voice is going to keep me interested. Right. Uh, dude, you you run into a lot of that, especially because like it, the one thing I can suggest for people that are very into audiobooks, like have a problem with narration and or if it's going to be a good narrator or not. 100 percent of the time, if you have Audible and you download an audiobook through Audible, that's going to knock it out of the park because Audible is owned by Amazon. So yeah. that's bigger budget, bigger money. But like if you use like a library app like I do, I use an app called Overdrive. Mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of uh, library books, but I can do audio and download them to my phone and shit. Now that mm -hmm. is a mixture of big production audio books and the downtown Abbey players group doing a reading of Dracula <laughs> in somebody's fucking basement. So, you know what I mean? Like, well, you get kind of get what you pay for. So if you have yeah. audible, I would suggest going that route. If you can, Yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I actually didn't even, re I didn't even remember this until now. Actually, my, my, my favorite uh, story of, of the whole middle earth, um, area is, is the Hobbit. And oh. I actually forgot that, until this very moment, actually, like <laughs> that's actually the book my mother would read me when I was super little. Wow, that's awesome. So I remember, I don't know if it was a joke, but I, I remember somewhere along the lines that Morgan Freeman like Holy read the, the beginning of it, like maybe the first page. Wow. And I don't know why I just brought it. Like it was just, I remember. I don't Listening see. I don't know it. if I can do. I don't know if I can a, do a Morgan whole book Freeman doing a whole book, man. Yeah, I'd because he's fucking yeah. nap out because his voice is so smooth. Mm, in a hole in the ground lived a hobbit. <laughs> Not <laughs> oh, just your every man hole. Yeah. And Ended Dufresne. Dufresne. <laughs> <laughs> How terrible is it that every time anybody mentions Morgan Freeman, that's the first <laughs> shit that pops into my brain. <laughs> Okay. Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to seek out and see if he, there's a version of uh, Shawshank that he did the audio for. <laughs> like, if he reads the whole fucking book. Um, but, yeah. Uh, dude, I'm always going to say yes. Absolutely. Like, if that exposes okay. you more, Lord of the Rings. But, dude, this is the thing. Have you read The Hobbit? No, 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 no. I've, I've never, ever touched an entire... Um, it's Middle not Earth. as the volume isn't as much and the detail isn't as it's it's a more simplified story, but it's just well it was it, also it, written when the fuck did Tolkien write those books? Fucking forever and a day ago. Yeah, like the super, super old. Yeah, they're very old. But dude, that just like I don't know, man. It, it's kind of like never ending story. You know, oh. maybe maybe like you hate it. No, God, oh. the complete like, opposite. No. Never ending story. Somebody watches like that shit the... still chokes me up to this day, dude. Oh yeah. Dude, still to this day. That yeah. fucking horse. Fucking yeah. oh. uh, every time, dude. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm an adult. <laughs> I can't be crying about this shit. But like with never ending yeah, no. story, you, people um fucking got into it late and then they always start with with not the first one and then they're like eh and yeah maybe it's better than filming and everything than the first one but the first one's just the first one you know you gotta right you gotta watch it man you gotta yeah absolutely dude like like i said dude like i i did not hate the first movie i i actually really liked the third um what the fuck was it return of the king return of the king that's what it was yeah no i absolutely love that like my favorite scene in that whole movie is I, I I can't remember if they're in a cave or walking down a path and the giant fucking spiders. Yeah. 
descend down upon him. Like that shit was cool as hell. And I fucking hate spiders, but it was it was a great scene. And I thought uh Vigo did a killer job sure, in the yeah, movies. Absolutely. Like I thought he did a great job. He was very, very good. But um audiobooks. Nobody reads an audiobook better than Jim Dale. I'm not familiar. Jim Dale is like an older guy, dude. He read he if you ever listen to any Harry Potter audiobook, <clears throat> you have to re- like listen to the Jim Dale version because this dude fucking does voices for every character. Even Hermione and his lady voice is fucking just amazing. Like All he's right. really really solid. So I can't I mean, read books out loud, so I can't, okay. All right. I have this, <laughs> I have this problem, and it, it and it was it was brought to my attention. <laughs> I used to <laughs> long ago. Hmm? Um, I I I worked, vol- volunteered for um special needs kids at a camp. Okay. And I also did stuff with uh, underprivileged kids at a free camp, and one of the portions. <clears throat> excuse me was uh was was story time hell yeah so dude. basically we would take four books and let mm-hmm. everybody decide which one they wanted to have read to <laughs> have read to them yeah oh god why do i have a feeling this is gonna get okay, good? okay i have a problem and i do this with everything not even just a, okay. a book so okay. like i have i have you know i brought i busted this out is that the it's, new one Yes, this is the new have, Twilight book. <laughs> have you finished it? No, I haven't even started it. Oh, okay. And I'm not making this up. So basically, like, I, I'm going to consciously try. I'm just going to read the, this first little little lines right here. And I'm going to do it consciously. Consciously. Okay, I can't sleep, I murmured, answering her question more fully. She was silent for a moment. At all, she asked. Never, I breathed. Okay. I have to try so hard to do that because so now... This is how it always happens when I normally read out loud. Okay. You ready? I'm fucking so excited. You have no idea. I can't sleep, I murmured, answering her questions more fully. She was silent for a moment. At all? She asked. Never. I breathed. So, so you, you almost read like in character. No, I. It was brought to my attention after I read it. the the book that they chose was Holes. You know that oh movie? shit! So I'm reading this, and then like everyone, you know, all the kids, they're all excited, they're all happy, they're listening to me. It's fine. The, the kids that right. don't know. So, uh, <laughs> and the parents are there too. Of course, it's a day camp. Yeah. So I get approached by my boss and a mom, and they're like, "We don't think you're doing this intentionally, but." Can you not read it so like erotically? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I can't help it. I will read well, anything I mean, in I don't know why. It's it's that um you know, honestly god, I think it's that radio thing. Maybe. Because like I know cuz uh living here, you know, and doing music for, you know, the time that I did music and shit. I've met quite a few people that worked on radio and stuff like that. And then you meet them in a bar and you have a conversation and stuff like that. And they talk normal, like you and I talk like, hey, what's going on? How are you? Yada, yada. But then they get behind that microphone and all of a sudden they're this larger than life fucking personality. We're like, hey, boy, what else, Ray? <laughs> you know, and you're like what the fuck? I just had a two hour talk with you and you didn't do that ever. Not even when you got animated in conversation. So maybe it's just your, your subconscious. That's how you hear it in your head. And they complained too about my gestures. Cause I talk a lot with my hands Hands, yeah. and I can't, I can't help it. Cause I feel robotic. Like, you know, her expression softened while I spiraled, you know, right. Her expression softened while I spiraled. <laughs> I tried right. to think of how, I could say goodbye in a way that she would know how much I loved her. I'm just saying. I can't, I can't yeah. fucking help it. And it's, yeah. and it's funny because uh, I, I, <laughs> I read instructions when I'm putting stuff together with my wife. And then I like look at her and she's just like, I'm like, 
what? You're supposed uh, to put you you put A <laughs> inside of B, and she's like, "Yeah, you do." And then yes, you do. Down to a. <laughs> Like, and she's I don't know. like, yep, we're going to the bedroom to screw hole A and just talk. Oh, and don't, don't, no, don't go that speak. far. You know, <laughs> she'll be in the bedroom later thinking of me, you know, giving her directions and uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> and then the, the head massager comes the out. Head, yeah, the head massager. <laughs> but I, I can never turn off. There we go. <laughs> One of these days we're going to end up having a whole episode where like the whole undertone is. <laughs> 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 But yes, audiobooks. Oh, the fantastic go. Twilight. I think there's a very underappreciated character in Twilight. Hold on, let me see if I can guess. Let me see if I can guess the unappreciated because I I have seen all the movies. Um, nope. Okay, I don't know. I'm th- I'm thinking it's one of the other vampires. I'm thinking it's one of the other vampire family members, but like the the sight girl. I want to say Alice, but I don't think that's her name. The one that can like, I don't know. This is gonna sound crazy. Okay, I doubt it, but we'll go with it. Oh, I always said, and this is gonna sound crazy because of who he is, Edward Cullen. He's the main character, though. How is he the really not? Guy? Uh, I guess technically he's not. Bella is the. the you got to understand. All those books are Bella's perspective. Correct. So I was always interested in. I wonder what the perspective of Edward was through all this that Edward was like. Why mm-hmm. does he do this? Why does he? Why does he risk so much? I could. Why see does that. he sacrifice so much? For this broad, for this, for this girl, like, yeah. who out there does all that with without more explanation than just "I love you"? Okay. Well, nobody nowadays. And that is why I was thrilled to fucking bits when this came out because Midnight Sun is it's all from his perspective. It's all from his perspective. So, is it the whole the whole series from his perspective, or is it just like a new book? From what I gather, it's the whole saga. Okay. Abridged. Okay, obviously. In his perspective. Okay, and now, that's awesome. People, and, and you you just said, you, you I'm not saying, like, you asked me what characters I felt were underappreciated. Of course. Now, when I say underappreciated, when, or when I think of underappreciated, I don't just think, just because somebody's super popular or has a big following doesn't mean that they're appreciated to no, the no, no, caliber no. or extent that they could be. I 100% agree with that whatsoever. Yes, absolutely. So that's why I... No, man. And that's actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, if you're more of a Team Jacob person than a Team Edward person, you could also say the same for Jacob because uh, that would almost be interesting as well is this dude that likes her just as much as this other dude and is willing to go to the same lengths, if not further, to get passed over. You know, like, that would almost be an interesting read, too, where he's kind of like, uh, the fuck is wrong with this bitch? <laughs> like, I'm fucking over here, you know, taking care of your ass when this one disappeared on you, and yada yada, so on and so forth. And Do we how... go on for days about this? We really could. Like, and, and, and even that, just the topic that you brought up, because, dude, I just one literally just popped in my head randomly that everyone. Oh, was absolutely, talking. man. And I mean, another like another character, and this is going to bring it somewhat back to comics for me, um, that like when uh, I've been reading Hellboy for years, 100 percent been reading Hellboy for years and stuff like that. And one of the most underappreciated characters in all of like Hellboy mythos to me is Abe. Abe and. Yeah. That's why I was so thrilled when they did Abe's solo shit. And they did his solo series and it dove much deeper into Abe as a character and stuff. But like at the same time, at the end of the day, there there is a character I feel that is even less touched on than Abe. And that's Liz. Because we don't really get much about Liz besides the fact that, you know, she burned up her family and everything when she was a kid because she couldn't control her power. Then she went 
DPRD, yada, yada, so on and so forth. But like, uh, maybe I got to reread BPRD and Hell on Earth and everything. But like, I don't feel that that character ever got like expanded upon enough to where like people could really be like, man, she's one of the main three from the, the OG Hellboy stuff that like, I, I don't still know very much about her though. And, you know, when you watch the movies that were put out, the two Del Toro movies, that's such a fucking flawed version of the character in the first place that it's like, don't get any of your information from that, because that's all bullshit. So, but yeah, dude, we could go on about this topic for fucking... Dude, uh, yeah, of course, okay, uh, um, I'll give you a hint. Aye, 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 aye. (laughs) Come on, Power Rangers, Alpha? Alpha 5? Alpha 5, man. Yeah. That guy gets no love. He and he was he was the he, he was the fucking he was the comms guy, man. He was. He was literally like Zordon's right hand, but he just yes, was also the comic relief of the show. Yeah, Besides, but let me fucking uh, tell you something. Who was the other who were the the bullies? Bulk bulk and skull? A skull and bulk, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like Alpha Five. Bulk and Skull were the fucking yeah. they were the comic relief of the show, but like but Alpha Five time, especially. Important. That yeah, role well, is so important. I will tell you from real life experiences, communication yes. and proper comms saves fucking lives, period. Not going to even fucking give it's anybody no. the benefit of an argument because I will no, I will dominate. Yeah. I will completely dominate you in that argument that the comms guy or girl is just as important as as the boots on the ground. Absolutely, dude. And I, I mean, like to take it in a, in a different way, not not as, you know like life or death but like it's like when we play rainbow yeah your ass gets aced in the fucking first five minutes and you're not paying attention to the camera and Uh oh you froze i didn't freeze the wife called oh (laughs) but um if you're not paying attention to the cameras and letting your team know um like hey guys this person's here and this person and any type of intel dude like that can that can decide a win or a loss right there. Absolutely, man. So, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little, uh, avant-garde, a little against the grain. Nope. I will wait. Ooh, she's calling again. Yep. She called again. Should we, uh, no, she'll figure it out. Hopefully I texted her before we even started, <laughs> but that just, oh, that just boy. lets me know that like, that's how important my text messages are. It sucks to suck. <laughs> I'm like, hey, we're doing the pod. Don't call me because I use my phone to do the pod. And I bet you there's going to be a third one coming. Can't wait. But we'll Oh, um, against the grain, uh, an underappreciated character that people only give a fuck about now because he's getting his own show, Moon Knight. I would agree with that because um, me be not being a very big Marvel guy, uh, the only thing I ever knew of Moon Knight is that his first appearance sells for a shit ton of money. And I've I've educated myself a little bit more in the past, you know, year or two, and I've read some some Moon Knight runs and stuff like that. It's 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 been an eye opening experience for me in the character because he's a great character and, and very tons of depth in that character that I don't think even the common person that has seen him pop up in Avengers can really grasp. Yeah, unless you actually like deep dive into the character, which I'm also on the hunt for like an early trade of that first like initial run, because like trying to buy those single issues is <laughs> fucking worthless. <laughs> so yeah, no, nah, that's that's a good topic, man. There's so many yeah, that's so sure. many. Um, I don't know what we're looking like on time. Thirty four. Oh, we're only on 34. I'm shocked. It feels like we've been here a while because we had an over half an hour hot sauce review. That is true. That is very true. And it's hilarious because we also went into this fucking raw dog blind. Um, Because we didn't even figure out a Mooper and Amanda. Mooper and Amanda? I was just about to say that. Like, I don't even... <laughs> I guess, I mean, at the end of the day, there, there's, there's a lot we could go into on Moops and Amandas and shit. But, but we'd have to break our own. 
our own. We'd have to. We'd we definitely have to break our own rule on that. Mm. But not gonna happen today, Satan. Not today. Um, not today. But yeah, dude. Like, and that's the thing is like I feel like there's so many un- underappreciated characters in all of cinema, film, and and books. Like the that, I forgot her name. The little girl in the crow. The the daughter. The daughter. Yes, absolutely, dude. Because she was. I thought she was ace. And the little girl that played her, and we're talking about the original nineties ninety six film. Mm-hmm. Ninety six. Yeah, dude, she was literally one of the best parts of that movie. Like that little girl knocked it out of the park. I felt like she was a very pivotal character. I've obviously never read the original James O'Barr book, but I don't know if she was in the books even at all. I, I like, I I'm not sure. I read the more modern Memento Mori Crow shit, which was okay. Yeah, I heard. Oh, you said it was bad, and it's I haven't. It's potential. I, I, that kind of falls into a little bit of my topic from last week, which I need to dive back in on real quick because we recently watched The Witches on okay. HBO Max. Oh God! And everyone's been shitting on that. Meaning, like, not wanting it and stuff. Okay. Hear me out. It was not bad. Um, I actually enjoyed the movie as a whole. I thought it was very, very good. They took some liberties with um, costume design that I thought were kind of weird. As opposed to the original 90s film with Angelica Houston. Like, the way that they made the witches look, I almost feel like they went a little too over the top for it. To the point where, like, okay, uh, with superheroes and shit, bringing it to comics, like, we always make that joke, like, how does nobody know that Clark Kent and Superman are the same guy? Uh You know what I mean? But, like, if you dive deeper into it, you see that he, like he makes himself shorter and he does things in the glasses and he does, he does subtle things that change his appearance when he's Clark and when he's Superman. So like on, you know, in drawing, you can't tell, but logically once you know the explanation, you know why I feel that the way that they did the witches in this new version, there's nobody on the planet that would have looked at them when they're supposed to be normal people and been like, nah, something's <laughs> fucked up with you. You know what I mean? Like, you would have to be like, wow, that's a whole lot of people that have the same physical fuck up in their yeah. their, their shit. So, um, but other than that, I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was cool. Uh, it's been years since I read the book, so I'm not sure if this new version accented more on the actual Roald Dahl fucking novel, which is also super funny because I had to explain to my wife and my kid actually how much that dude hated children, which most people don't know. Dude wrote some of the best children's novels of all time. and Hated kids. Fucking- hated kids hated kids and i can never read them aloud to uh children because then i'll just seem weird because apparently you just make everything you read sexy yeah (laughs) well i wouldn't say sexy i'd say creepy but yes well i guess Mm. i got talked to i had to had to like hey 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 i'm sitting back here as a mother and i'm feeling some type of way about the way you're reading old yeller oh god (laughs) (laughs) i give up but yeah man um i guess we're just gonna have a shorter episode this week and people are just gonna have to deal with it because i don't know if you want to continue to go on with with what we're going on or if you have anything else to touch on it's always stuff to talk about i mean that's you need to get off so you can uh call no no i heard sounds outside the door so i know she's home and she, I assume at this point she read her text and was like, oops. <laughs> oh. I got a moop. <clears throat> it's going to tie into something that happened. Yes, I'm going to use the death of somebody. So we're going to talk Gre- about something. You know what it fucking grinds my gears? <clears throat> oh, Greer. It grinds my gears. 
All right. He's not there, and I go, okay, sometimes. Dude. Sean Connery just passed. Yes, he did. He did pass away. I'm debating whether or not to put this person on blast, but I had a debate with them about Bond, who is the best Bond. Don't ask me how it came about. Actually, I do know how it came about. It came from a conversation. Oh, Kingsman. You ever, you know, the Kingsman? Oh, yeah. Great movies. Did you ever read the books? No. Okay. I read the books. I enjoyed them. They're fucking funny. I'm not a huge Mark Millar guy, yeah. so that's probably why I didn't read them. So those, those, the movie was a little over the top, especially at the end. It's like this this woman has been like trapped in the cell forever, and she's like, no, fuck me in my butt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a little ridiculous. But that turned into somehow like uh, the old spy movies. Okay. And, uh, that turned into James Bond, and I'm like, well, there is only really one Bond, and that Bond is Sean Connery. And Oh, no. I'm Roger assuming Moore. they went with um, Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Yeah. Back and forth uh, and back and forth. Older person or younger? Uh, it depends on what you consider older or younger. I'm going to in the 30s. Oh, so, okay, our age. Um, that's odd. That's odd that someone our age would be more of a Roger Moore than a Connery because I believe Moore was more before Connery or no, after? No, Con- Connery was the first Bond. Okay, he was number. Okay, so that I guess that technically oh, makes wow, sense. From what I find, yeah, because he only did what like two Bond films? Three, two, three. three. Okay, and then Moore did a fucking slew. Two. And then yeah. we don't talk about Pierce Brosnan because he's a cunt. <laughs> Uh, Pierce Brosnan, you're just a cunt. You've always been a cunt. I don't like you. I don't like your face. I don't like your voice. You're like that other British cunt actor that was Hugh, 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 Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Okay. I I hate that guy. I hate your face. I hate how you look. I hate how you dress. I hate how you talk. I hate how you have those giant fucking horse teeth. (laughs) Okay. People with yeah, but Paul Bettany. You got Paul Bettany from England. I love I love British people. I do. <laughs> and people from England, Scotland, Ireland, all in between the South, any I love it all. Not fucking Pierce Brosnan or Hugh Grant. Suck it, Mama Wave. Oh, fucking no. My my biggest love for Pierce Brosnan is going to be the episode of The Simpsons that he did. But that's just because I'm a Simpsons guy. So that's fine. But no, <laughs> the, to me they're they're just. To just two Amandas, and I'm so glad their careers died. Especially <laughs> fucking, I couldn't just like God. Every like romantic comedy in the fucking late '90s and in early 2000s. Oh yeah, y'all the great hits. I love you. <laughs> like fuck off. I just got so triggered for absolutely no reason. But uh, yeah, Pierce Brosnan, Hugh Grant, you're okay. my Amandas this week. Boom. Big toothed fuck. Okay, so let's go back to this Roger Moore, Sean Connery thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to say, uh, okay, so this is what irritates me. Is, is, is So the, the conversation dives deeper into how, oh, it also probably has to do with the fact that I don't, I don't like Sean Connery. I never thought he was that good of an actor. Not me, not me, them. Uh, never thought he was a good, an act, good actor. I thought he was overrated. I didn't give a fuck about his character in uh, Indiana Jones. I didn't give a fuck about you're the man now, dog. Um, finding Forrester, none like, and I'm just like, okay, uh-huh. all right, whatever. You know, like, dude, there's somebody out there that's gonna look at me and be like, what do you mean, Hugh Grant is the best? No, they're gonna love Hugh Grant or Pierce Brosnan, and they're gonna think I'm a giant fucking twat, and that's fine. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm not gonna shit on the person for having an opinion because we all have opinions, <laughs> and we of just have to not. Maybe they don't like Sean Connery because they just don't think he's a good actor. Fine. Fine. Let's wipe that out real quick then. Sean Connery then expires. He dies. Okay. Of course he does. And I assume this person did the same thing that everybody does when somebody fucking dies. And story. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, legend. Okay. Mupicus Maximus. So anybody that does that, like, what are you doing? 
stick to your guns. There's been people that have died that to this day, I'm still going to say, I mean, Man, you're shit. <laughs> you know, who one of them is who I'm probably going to get shit on. Look, I, was he a good actor? I guess. I suppose to some people, I mean, he won awards and shit. Like I, 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 even in death, I don't give a fuck about Philip Seymour Hoffman. Was Philip Seymour Hoffman really that good of an actor, though? They say, I mean, <clears throat> I know he did the, you know. I'm the Truman Capote. Yeah. yeah. But, like, see, and that's the thing, though. Like, okay. So you do one really, really stellar role, and all of a sudden, like, we're going to forget about you, and along came Polly? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Dude, like, this, come on, man. people that do that with anything, like, like when Nipsey Hussle. Got, 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 got. Okay. All of a sudden now, like, I didn't know there's so many fucking uh, Nipsey fans out there. Well, there's tons, apparently. It was like, I'm like, wait, wait why, where, where'd this come from? You know, it's, it's just about, uh, you know, I guess people feeling uh, uh, bad for you because you lost somebody that is so um, important to you and, and integral, I guess, like. I don't know where it comes from, but, but like, fine. It, and that's possible. It's... There's artists out there that, dude, I, I even get upset, you know, when when uh, I watch the Doors movie, for example, because I know how the ending is. And, and, and Jim Morrison oh. dies, and he's, dude, look, fucking look all around me. I, I, I get upset yeah. that that my my hero, well, for some things, my act <laughs> actor wise hero, <laughs> not so much real life, um, right, died. I'm talking about Marlon Brando, by the way. Um, of course. Sorry, I just got a text saying you have COVID. Go get checked. <laughs> it's not a. It's like one of those fake numbers. It's probably one of those scams. But oh, anyway, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not gonna pretend that when Philip Seymour Hoffman died, that I was upset just to get people to say like or look like, oh, you know, yeah. I didn't and, and this is going to sound... Uh, do you want to say it? <laughs> do I want to say what? It's going to sound shitty? No, I know exactly what we're... So this person's a moop, and people that do that are moops. Because, oh, God. Are we doing this? <laughs> I know. Let's just call the person a moop. Save face. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. You definitely do if I gave you a hint. Maybe. Okay. I I'm just saying fine, fuck it. I'll be the dickhead here <laughs> as usual. Same thing happened and and same thing happened with 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 Chadwick Bosman. Chadwick Bosman. Okay. Is he deserving to be mourned? Absolutely. Of course. Did he change in effect millions of people yes i Absolutely. love the man i think he is great i think all he did for charity i think he was very strong but what i don't agree with is people that don't give a fuck about him now saying that they give a fuck about him just because they're jumping on the bandwagon of everybody oh, feeling bad well, not only course. that Absolutely. not only that how about the fact that that man decided because he died of cancer that he wanted to keep it private of course and there's people out there shitting on the dude in death that he like i i read you remember i sh i sent you some links some screenshots that literally people were writing like how um what is that word um how selfish of right for not letting his fans know that he had cancer excuse me <laughs> which is silly as hell to me because that that is such a private thing like that is a personal battle dude and, like whatever you choose to do with the knowledge that you have like look man Cancer is not contagious. You know what I mean? Like, if I cough in your mouth and I have cancer, you're not going to get cancer because I coughed in your mouth. It's just not going to happen that way. Yeah. That's just not how cancer works. So if this man wanted to suffer and be in solitude, that's 100% his right. And there is no reason that you could ever say anything bad about that. That's not being selfish. That's no, not being, on the contrary, he uh, went out and did a lot of things. Selfless. selfless, because he still went out, he still filmed, he still visited children's hospitals. He didn't make it about him. He didn't make it a... No. So, but 
Those and he's, just, just yeah. stop, stop making p- other people's deaths and celebrities about having attention be on you. That's basically exactly. you're a fucking moop if you're you do a moop that. if you do that. A hundred percent. Because and that and that goes for not just celebrities, that goes for people in your everyday life. Yeah. Like we've all known people throughout our whole lives. And I I I I will use a personal life experience. Uh, there was a, a person that I used to know. He was a really nice dude. Um, he played in bands that my band played with back in the day. He was a, he was a great person. He had a very piss poor addiction to heroin and hard drugs. And he got himself cleaned up. He fell off the wagon. He got himself cleaned up. But I distinctly remember lots of people shitting on this dude for being a junkie and being this and being a shit person and yada, yada, so forth. When he finally, you know, bought the big one and he passed because of his addictions. People that I had conversations with this far away that told me he was a bag of shit are on social media crying about how they lost their brother and blah 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 don't give me that no move the fuck on dude because when that dude was kicking around and doing bad shit and making poor decisions you were like he's a piece of shit but then all of a sudden he kicks the bucket and everybody else that was actually good friends with said person or you know impacted by said person are, are very upset by it like, you have to, like, shimmy in real quick and be like, yeah, 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 I'm real sad, too. Fuck. Yeah, fuck because that. people like that need the I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, but what fucking for, dude? Because full circle, they are the selfish ones that need that attention. There you go. So people, like, in, in the case of Chadwick Boseman, like, people calling him selfish. <laughs> Like, it's just insane to me, dude. Because, like, no, but see, they're calling him selfish because they're trying to grand grand eyes make it bigger that they suffered a bigger loss because they couldn't prepare for it and it's like and and sure some people okay maybe that's how they felt but some of these fucking motherfuckers on social media that were blasting this shit all about dude could uh, what what movies did he play in uh black panther what other what else uh he was supposed to be in Black Panther 2. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Rock on. Good fucking job. So you hate Sean Connery. You think he's a shitty actor. You never liked him. You never cared for him. You thought he was overrated. But now all of a sudden you're calling him legend. Rest in peace and 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay. Take your ass on, motherfucker, because that shit is moopish. Yep. Yeah, dude, 100%. Couldn't agree more. That is definitely more than enough of a fucking moop this week. Agreed. Because and uh, any we're... person that does that is that fucking Sucks asshole. Suck, man. Sucks I to mean, suck. it, it does suck to suck and fucking, but like at the end of the day, dude, like check yourself, man. Like if you do that shit with celebrities, because like, let's be realistic, dude. We all have our celebrity people that we, we very much so enjoy. But at the end of the fucking day, not my friend, dude. I don't know you on a personal level. For all I know, I love your acting, but you're a shit in person. Could be. You know what I mean? Like, you could be the best person in the world. Like, even, dude, and you could even break down the wall of, like, charity work and everything like that, too. Because there's lots of shitty people in the world that give to charity constantly. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't mean they're not shitty behind closed doors. You know? Like, their friends could be like, man, I guess fucking asshole. But, like, he gives millions to Children's Hospital every year, but he's still a fucking asshole. Paging Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Ooh, there you go. Kevin Spacey did tons of shit for his whole fucking career. Like, donated super, you know, into all kinds of shit. But, like... He's a garbage person, bag? Yeah, any person that ever had a one-on-one interaction with the guy was like, yeah, he kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, he's kind of a bad guy. And he... I mean, inevitably, he got outed. Crime. For, yeah, I mean, inevitably he got outed, but still, like, how many years did he do shit, and how many years did people all over the world do shit, and then as soon as they kick the bucket, everybody's like, "Ah, oh, you're a martyr! Like, wait, hold the phone, guys! Dude, uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> like, hold up! The, the funniest way... It, I look at it like this. It's like when you just start dating a girl, or guy, it doesn't matter, and you guys bang, okay? Yeah. 
when you guys are together oh of course all her friends or his friends oh he's fucking great in bed he's got the biggest dick and he's awesome the second that breakup comes he sucked in bed his dick is tiny and he's a piece of shit boom exactly or or it goes the other way you think somebody's a piece of shit but now all of a sudden you want the attention so there you go me 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 True. Nothing, and, and this I goes mean, back. That happens in breakups too, where like, of course, it happens in just you, relationships. Oh, that's what I mean. Like, even the okay, say you are the the deciding factor in the relationship ending. Like, yeah. you were the dickhead. You don't tell your friends that. Like, no one's gonna be like, "Oh, I was super shitty," and they finally walked out on me. They're gonna be like, "Oh, can you believe that this person did this and left me?" It's like, if you're an asshole, like some of us. Yeah. You will look at that person and be like, "You sure? You really it's just, sure?" <laughs> it's just how in the in the whole like shock shock the shock value like, dude. Yes. It's like if me and my wife were just dating, and I only see her once a week. We live right. in separate areas. I see her once a week. Exactly. And I complain that I don't see her enough. We don't spend enough time together. But when she comes over my house, I come downstairs and play Xbox with you while she's either exactly. sitting next to me or in the bed or whatever by herself. Huh? Yep. So who inevitably is a Cost- fucking jerk off in that? Exactly. Is it's- it my wife for living? Well, let's say we're just dating. Is it is it is it her for living far away and like working far away from me and us having separate schedules? Or is it actually me? Because when she is here, it's like. I'm going to go play Xbox with Fuzz. Absolutely, so people, 100%. People like that are the, like just the, the 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 big correlation between all this is using somebody else's issue or death or problem to benefit yourself because I can sh- assure you there's a lot of people out there that you know what they would do? Let's say now uh, Angelica, my wife, now we're in this situation, confronts me about it. Right. If I'm that type of person that's going to shit on Sean, uh, shit on Sean Connery, but then when he dies, I think he's the best. I'm also probably going to be the same person that twists and turns it. Oh on. yeah. Well, exactly. you know, I, I work too. You know, this right. is the weekend. Um, it's I not my do, fault that you I'm that you live do. far away right. and that you decided to work far away. So I'm going to play with Fuzz. So it's your your fault. Your fault. So you can you can you can go buy a fucking controller and play with me. You can do this. You can do that. Yeah. Always turning the fucking tables in their benefit. So all that moop. Blah. And now we're at fifty-seven forty-eight. <laughs> yes. So cutting we, it a little short yes. under an hour. That's fine. Um, there ain't nothing wrong. Just, they can't all be hundred and fucking sixty-minute episodes. Uh, that's true, but you know, <laughs> we made up for it. We have over half an hour long uh, hot sauce for this guy's awesome yeah. channel, El Fuzzo's Hot Sauce Reviews. Thank you. And um, do you have any? Do you have any parting advice for our our wonderful five listeners? Yeah, you know what I do. Okay, let's, let's do, do it. it. Oh, oh, we took the hat off. Okay. Okay. And this is gonna go out to the fellas. The, ooh, the fellas this time. Pay attention to your ladies. There's a difference. You know, you live together. That's fine. But a little goes a long way. Don't ever forget that just because you spend a lot of time together means that you can start slacking on the little bits of appreciation. Nice. So, to tie into what I said, if you want to play Xbox with your friends, always. Always good to have independence from each other. Don't ever want to be smothered. That being said, don't go complain when you're at work or to your friends or to your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever, that they are the reason why everything's fucked up. So this is for the fellas because men do this more than women. That's true. 
Make complaints all you want, but don't forget it takes two to fucking tango. So you can either fuck your wife or fuck your fist, but the only one that's ever going to break your heart is your wife, and that's that. Boom. Whoop. <laughs>